When you set up a production line in Satisfactory, there are two primary ways to get your materials where they need to go. These methods are called the manifold and load balancing, respectively. In this video, we're going to walk through both methods and why you might choose one over the other. And if you find this helpful, I'd love if you left it a like and subscribe to the channel for more guides and updates. The manifold method is generally a more straightforward way of filling up your machines, but this simplicity does come with some downsides. In this method, you will have all of one type of resource on a single belt and then use splitters to split off resources into machines one by one. This is essentially a line of production machines with a line of splitters in front of them. It's a pretty simple system because you only need to build as many splitters as you have machines and connect one belt through them all. But that simplicity is also the method's biggest downside. It can take a long time to get a new factory up and running using this method, especially if the input material isn't coming very quickly. Assuming there's no backups yet, a two output splitter will send every other item through either output. This means that when your resources hit the first splitter, half of the items will go into the first production building and half of them will continue on down the manifold. When that half of the resources hits the second splitter, they'll be split in half again, and so on and so on. What this means in reality is that the last machines in the manifold will be inactive for quite a while, while the production machines are saturating with parts. The first machine in the chain will eventually back up with resources, then the second, then the third, until every machine is backed up. But this can take a long time, especially if the machines are already producing and sending items off to the next stage of production. Your machines will be inefficient for a short time while this system is getting set up. But eventually everything will normalize. If you need to get a factory running at full capacity right away, the manifold method may be too slow for you. If you're limited by your belt speed, you can use a manifold injection. This is identical to the normal manifold system, but adds a merger partway through the chain that injects more resources into the system based on how many resources the earlier machines in the chain are already utilizing. But if you're going to be using the manifold injection system, there's a good argument to be made for going with the other building style, load balancing. Load balancing, sometimes referred to as belt balancing or just balancing, is a more complex, material intensive, and physically larger setup than the manifold but ensures that factories start up quicker and buildings are given an equal amount of items at all times. A load balancer splits one belt into another number of belts, such that each belt is consistently carrying the same amount of items. The manifold system technically also splits one belt into many, but it doesn't maintain an equal amount of resources entering each building at the same time. Compared to the manifold system, a load balancer will get every building in a production line started at the same time and much quicker. However, while the manifold is a quick and brute force method of moving resources, the load balancer will be more complex and could include some math. Sometimes math that feels quite complicated. Luckily, that math is easy in the majority of cases. If you have a number of production buildings that is divisible by two or three, you're in luck. Splitters can split into two belts or three belts. So splitting into an amount of belts that are multiples of these numbers simply involves repeating the same pattern several times. So if you have four production buildings, you will split your one original belt into two lines, then split each of those into two, thus creating four equally loaded belts. Even if you need to split into a hundred different belts, you can do that by simply iterating the process and nesting more splitters. What can get complicated is when you need to split belts into numbers that are not divisible by two or three, like what happens when you need to split a belt into five identical belts. You may just want to give up and go with the manifold method on these, but sometimes you need all of the belts to be equal, especially if nuclear waste is involved. Doing the math here is far from impossible. It's actually quite easy once you get into it. Balancing these numbers involves using loopbacks to remove some of the materials from the system and then seeding them back in. So let's use the example of splitting one belt into five equal belts. You'll start by putting a splitter on your original belt. Let's call it splitter one. This splitter will have two outputs, thus splitting your main belt into two halves. One of these halves will go to a second splitter, which will get split three ways. Two of these outputs will be in your final balanced belts, and the other will loop back and re-enter the system at the beginning via a merger. Make sure this is before both of the splitters. The other half that we created with splitter one can get split again into three belts, which will be three more of our final balanced belts, giving us all five that we needed. This would have been impossible without the loopback belt, but if you're not super confident in your math, you may be wondering how this all was calculated. It's actually pretty simple. 
every time you need to create a number of belts not divisible by two or three, make it simple by imagining that you need to create one additional belt, then send that belt back to the beginning of the system. So in this case, we're splitting the materials into six equal belts instead of five, but we send the sixth one back to the start of the system to get split up. We make it simpler by splitting them in a way that we can easily understand, then returning the excess material to the main input to be split up five ways. This can be scaled up to any number you need. All it takes is a few iterations, a little bit of time to get even, and then everything will be running smoothly. Well, that's manifold versus load balancing. Each has their advantages and disadvantages, and it's up to you which you use. I personally use manifolds like 99% of the time, because it's just easier and takes up less space. But there are some situations where using a load balancing method just makes more sense. What do you think? Leave a comment below letting me know how you use these methods or if you learned something from this video. And make sure you're subscribed so you can see all of our future guides and news updates about Satisfactory.